Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Good afternoon and welcome to the show. This is Benjamin Briggs with Alaska Business Journal. And today we have with us Dr. Eric Olson, practitioner of osteopathic medicine and a member of the American Board of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. Today we're going to be we are going to be talking about his practice, some medical approaches and what his visions are for the future in physical medicine. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Dr. Olson. Thank you. How long have you been in Alaska? Uh, a little over three years now. Three years? Mm-hmm. You can't expand? Well, uh, let's see. Um, I'm originally from northern Wisconsin, uh, kind of small town, 300 people. So um, met my wife in medical school, and she's from Alaska, Anchorage area. I uh, went to Diamond High School. Um, and uh, she was in the Air Force when I met her, and we basically tried to get uh, so she'd be stationed up here for her last tour and so we could stay here and build a practice and a family and that's how we ended up in uh, Alaska. So what kind of practice do you have? Well, I work at the Alaska Spine Institute. We do a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, non-surgical treatments for people with chronic or acute aches and pains and injuries. Uh, whether it be back or other joints and muscles and things like that. Okay. Uh, can you give us some history of you, your qualifications, and any other ventures that you are involved in or involved with? Um, well, let's see. I went to uh, medical school at uh, Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine. It's uh, in Kirksville, which is a small town in northeast Missouri, uh, one of the founding schools of osteopathic medicine, actually. Um, and from there, I uh, did a residency in physical medicine and rehabilitation or physiatry at uh, University of Wisconsin, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, that's quite impressive. So uh, what is physical medicine and rehabilitation? Uh, it's a pretty broad field. Um, when you're trained in uh, physiatry, uh, they usually uh, start you out doing inpatient rehabilitation when you're working with people who have had large strokes, spinal cord injuries, uh, large surgical procedures that require a lot of rehabilitation that they likely would not be able to accomplish at home or as uh, an outpatient. Uh, so we oversee their rehabilitation in a hospital setting, make sure no medical issues arise as they're recovering from their injury or their stroke and uh, help them with working with a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, and speech therapist. So what is a doctor of osteopathic medicine? Um, that's, uh, osteopathy started uh, in the late 1800s uh, by a man named Andrew Taylor Still. Uh, he was originally trained as an MD, uh, worked in uh, surgery during the Civil War and uh, apparently was uh, a bit frustrated about the lack of improvement they saw in some of his patients. Uh, many of his family members also uh, became ill with conditions like diphtheria and uh, the treatments at the time would uh, helped his family and uh, I believe he lost several of his daughters and sons to illness. So he developed a different type of treatment trying to encourage the body to heal itself usually through manipulative treatments, trying to optimize the nervous system, optimize the lymphatics to promote healing. Um, over time, as medicine improved, osteopathy started uh, adopting a lot of what MDs currently do for treatments. Uh, and now, uh, in addition to manipulation, we also do uh, or practice a lot of the medicine that you see allopaths or MDs uh, practice. Okay, it's a lot of information. So uh, what about, uh, what specific training does a DO have to have? Well, uh, we have to be trained uh, in the same sorts of areas that MDs are trained. So we have to know our uh, pharmacology or how medications work, physiology, how the human body works, anatomy, uh, biochemistry, things like that. And we also have to spend a significant amount of time learning about manipulative treatments and treating the musculoskeletal system uh, in the way that osteopathy was originated. 
He yeah, I studied a little human anatomy and physiology, and that was a lot of stuff to remember. So once again, I'm impressed. Why is it important to see a physician who was board certified? Well, uh, that helps ensure that uh, the physician you're seeing has uh, learned all the uh, critical or key areas uh, in the specific field that they're board certified in and hopefully can give you the uh, best uh, evidence-based uh, treatments for your illness or condition. Okay, so how do DOs diagnose? Well, um, it's a multi-step process, uh, basically you start uh, talking to the patient, find out what their history of their condition is, what their other medical issues are, how this all started, what sorts of things that they've done so far to make things better, or what sorts of things seem to make it worse. Uh, then we do a physical exam to test whether, in my particular field, check, uh, see which uh, joints or muscles are the source of pain, check the nervous system to see if there's any deficits to sensation or strength. Uh, and put all those pieces together and determine what else needs to be done, whether you can start treatment, order different labs, or uh, imaging studies. So do, we, do DOs have a specific place that they should practice, or is it private practices, or in your case, the Alaska Spine Institute? Um, where do they normally practice? Uh, they typically practice uh, anywhere. Uh, MDs will practice hospitals, clinics, private practice, um, uh, uh, just about any setting where you'd see other physicians. Uh, Pretty in basically any uh, house, hospital setting. Yeah, you see them as cardiologists or neurologists or psychiatrists, family practice doctors. Okay. So what would you say is the most important element of physical medicine? Um, trying to put all the information together. Oftentimes when we see a patient, they've been bouncing around to other providers, trying to figure out what's going on. And the way we're trained is to try to put the whole picture together um, so that um, we not necessarily... I'm saying this wrong. Um, so that um, um, hopefully by communicating mm -hmm. with uh, other physicians that the patient has worked with, uh, we can uh, develop a plan of action, hopefully more effectively coordinate a patient's care. Sounds pretty important to uh, recognize this if I'm a new patient, and I appreciate it. Um, what are one or two of the most popular misconceptions about physical medicine and the result that it produces, if any? Um, physical medicine, uh, sort of like uh, surgery, people expect that you're going to fix them and cure their situation. And sometimes we can do that, but sometimes people have some chronic issues, wear and tear arthritis. Um, wear and tear of the discs in their back um, and things like that that uh, can be modified. We can work on building up people's strength, uh, but we, we can't fix the disc. Medical technology has not come to that point where we can just simply fix something. Okay. Um, so we do what we can to try to optimize things so people can do as well as they can, but they're oftentimes left with some lingering issues and things that they can't do because of their condition. And you do practice privately? Yes. Okay, so how would my readers or listeners contact you if they wanted to see you? Uh, well, they could request uh, a uh, uh, evaluation simply by contacting the Alaska Spine Institute. Um, they'd like to request me specifically or one of the other providers in the clinic. Um, arrangements being made to uh, get them seen in hopefully a timely fashion. Okay, well, thank you for your time, and I must say it is a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.